What is up guys, welcome back to Wild Rift welcome University, Wild and today we're going to be doing a support video. I kind of realized that support is the uh, lane I haven't done a video on in a while. I was actually going to do a support Ash video, but lately I have been in love with Nami. Nami is by far my favorite support in the entire game, I think. Uh, well, to play. I just think she's super fun, I think she's super strong. I think she works in a lot of things. She does kind of fall off a little bit late game, I would say. Uh, but she has tremendous uh, play potential, bully potential, poke potential. I don't think she's the best support in the game, but she's definitely up there. In the right hand, she can be deadly as well. So, I, I but I was going to do an Ash support game uh, from Kiriyami. Kiriyami sent me an Ash support game. He's a top 200 Ash um, and he's a really good support player. But I wanted to play this game because this game, it's a, a legendary game. Uh, all the players in this game are going to be like Grandmasters, Challengers. Uh, there might be some Masters in here as well. I'm not really sure. I believe I was Vanquisher 2 in this game. I can't remember because I've recently fallen down to Vanquisher 3. But I believe this game is from like a week or so ago. So I think I was still Vanquisher 2 in this game. I can't remember. But anyways, um, I want to use this game because I think for people who are support mains, like one of their biggest things is like, oh, it's super hard to win when you're a support main and to carry when you're a support main, things of this nature. And as you'll see in this game, like <clears throat> my team does really bad. Now, eventually my team does kind of like come back and well, not my team, <laughs> really one of the players on my team kind of comes back and starts... Um, playing well, but I'm really the one who carries <clears throat> this game early, and I think you will see it kind of like in some really highly experienced support players, and I wouldn't consider myself a super high experienced support player. I do play it. I would probably consider it my third best role in the game. Jungle being my best, mid being my second best, support being my third best, top being my fourth best, and ADC being my fifth best. ADC used to be my third best, but I don't know what's gone on with me in ADC this season. But I kind of wanted to show you, like, how can you play support and still impact the game in a way to where you can still win? Because, like, if you look at this, I mean, like, they have some good champions in everything. They have a Darius. They have a Karma. Um, they have a Vi. They have a, um, a Kai'Sa. So r some really strong champions have an Ari. Uh, we have some really strong champions, but we end up having a, um, you know, the 0 and 10 Yasuo, basically. Like, basically how you always expect it to be. Anytime you have a Yasuo, if you go into the game thinking, well, he's going to die 10 times, uh, it'll help your mental. It'll, it'll definitely help your mental as well. So, this game, I actually did a, re a really good job at staying focused, and I actually didn't really get too tilted this game. Uh, like I said, those of you who watch my stream, uh, you know that, like... I get frustrated just like the rest of you and everything. Here, I feel like I should have been poking the tower a little bit more. I did like that I went down there to kind of like uh, just check things out. But I would have liked to see me poke tower because I missed the opportunity to where I could have actually gotten rid of some of my stacks and everything. Like, I've been doing a really good job of being aggressive and poking and making sure that I'm stacking my stacks. So if you're playing support that, you know, has stacks where you have to hit the enemy, you got to make sure anytime you have an opportunity to hit a tower or hit the enemy that you are doing so but not doing it in a way to where it's gonna cost you too much health. Um, unless you're going to get enough health back to where you're getting that health and gold trade in return. So you need to make sure that you're doing both. Nami is super easy to do this with. Uh, I think she's one of the easier ones because if you're close enough, you can heal yourself, hit uh, hit the enemy, just like that. Like, like I'm helping my teammate. I got the kill there. That was kind of unfortunate. I didn't really necessarily mean to get um, the kill there. We would have got both there, but I was trying to hit my exhaust, and she was just out of range, unfortunately. If I wouldn't have played so far back, I probably would have been able to get both of them, but I was a little far back in the way I was playing. Here, this was kind of stupid. I was trying to tell them to leave, and it wasn't a good uh, play, but unfortunately, you know, they didn't really listen to me. And there's kind of like a cascading effect that happens here as well. So because they take a little bit... Of, actually, is that a different game? 
I think that's a different game that I'm thinking of right now. Never mind. But uh, luckily they didn't stay. Because, yeah, I think the other game, they stayed and they actually died. But that's different. So right now, basically what I'm doing is I'm rotating through the center of the jungle. This way I can see where I can uh, place value. Because, like, my Yasuo is already 0-1. So I was like, okay, you know, I can rotate through the center of the map right now. Or the center of the jungle. And I can possibly help. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do anything. Their team rotated really well. There's so really not too much what I can do. I'm trying to back off my team. I can't really get up to my top jungle, so I'm just going to push the middle wave. Uh, for some reason, the Ezreal keeps going in, even though we don't have anything that we can do. So that was kind of unfortunate. Like I said, my team played kind of dumb. So my next thought process is where can I maintain value? What can I do to help me win the game? So like when you're having a game... Whereas, like, you feel like your team is feeding and everything. You feel like it's not looking... Because, like, when... You guys all know those games where... When you actually go back and watch it, you're like, Oh, wow, this really isn't that bad. But in the moment, you're like, Wow, this is really bad. And the game feels out of reach. It's really difficult to... Separate the feeling of the game with the logic of the game. Because this game's such an emotional game because we run into so many negative situations so often... Um, separating the feeling of the game and, like, the actual logic of the game is, it's very difficult. Because, for example, like, think about the times, I don't know if you ever spectate your friends play, you watch them play, or you just watch me play or somebody, and you see a play, and you're like, wow, well, that was really obvious that was the wrong thing to do. But in the moment, me or the player you're watching or the player playing thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, but you watching from a distance just know 100 percent that's the wrong thing to do it's because your emotions out of it and you're able to think logically and you're not thinking about the game in an emotional standpoint but you're just thinking about the game in a logical standpoint the part that i was talking about was actually this up here i thought that ezreal should have backed with me but he didn't he stayed um that was the part that i was initially thinking of and because of that now i'm basically having to try and defend this tower 1v2 and my jungler's bot, my top is still top, and my mid it can't really leave. So, like, we're basically in a place where, like, we're going to lose this tower. And it's all because he didn't back. So, like, things like that. Like, I'm a very, um, I'm a very deep thought player. Which the great thing about being a deep thought player is, like, you really think deep into the game and, like, all the aspects of the game. The downside is, uh, and you understand the, you understand, like, the the seriousness of every play. The downside is because you understand the seriousness of every single play a lot of times that it can come back to haunt you because you overanalyze the fact that like, hey, this mistake means this and it can cause us to lose because of X, Y, Z versus, and it kind of takes your mind off the fact that like, okay, yeah, but they're going to make a mistake too and we just have to capitalize on it. You need to have a good balance of um, these are the mistakes that I made. Yes, I realize they're they're detrimental, detrimental mistakes because these mistakes, now that they've happened, it's given the enemy team a lead. And if they capitalize on it properly um, and capitalize on their leads properly, then you can't really come back from it unless they make a mistake. You always have to remember like nobody's perfect and people will make mistakes. And sometimes I forget that, uh, especially like when I'm playing at higher ELO games, I forget that because mistakes happen so less often. The lower the elo, I'm usually not as worried because, like, I just know they're going to throw the game somehow. But the higher the elo gets, the more when those things happen, it makes it really difficult for me to stop and focus. Like, one of the things that you can do, like, when that's happening, try and, and what I'm also going to do this game because, like, you'll see, like, my team gets pretty far behind and everything. I look for the strong, like, my Yasuo's 0 3 right now, my ADC's 0 2. It's basically me, excuse me, uh, me and the Akali. We're the only ones doing anything. Ayaso's up top, getting uh, dove again, because he's not paying attention, and he's basically dead. And I really just didn't feel like my um, Ezreal knew what he's doing. I don't think maybe he was an ADC main. That's the annoying thing about Legend Q sometimes. I feel like more often you get put on roles that you don't really play and everything. So when you have that situation, try and find the player who's doing really well and play around them. So I kind of felt like the strongest players in this game was Akali. So like I wanted to try and help Akali as much as I can, help the jungler. 
I feel like those three, cha those two champions were really the champions that were playing the best. And then the other champions is just like, I'll help you when I can and as I can, but like my main resource of time is going to be helping them because they're really the only chance that we have of winning this game. And then I'm just going to continue to look for plays that will give us a big opportunity to win the game, okay? Because even though, like, the Yasuo's 0-4 and, and the Ezreal's 0-3 right now, my champion syn uh, synchronization with Yasuo is really great. So we can make great plays together just because of my alt, my bubble, and... If the game goes long enough, it really doesn't matter that much if Yasuo's 0 and 10, just because he technically scales so hard. So here, you know, I was kind of hoping that our team would rotate to Dragon, but we back late. Um, Yasuo gets caught out again, so I'm like, okay, there's nothing I can really do here. So I'm trying to tell my team, let's just push this top tower because uh, it's a 4v5. We're already behind. The team doesn't want to do that. They want to fight, so we go in and fight. Maybe I should have stayed. Um, not really 100% sure. I think I could have stayed and maybe it makes a bigger difference, but either way, it kind of, I think we should have just taken the tower and, and backed off. But like I said, maybe if I stayed a, stayed a little sooner, maybe we actually do win that. Uh, but it's it's hard to say because, you know, the Yasuo went in early and kind of gave us a deal. Now we've got both the sh two strongest dragons in the whole game. There's only the worthless dragon left. The dragon that needs to just be removed and give back wind dragon or they need to change it to like maybe um omni vamp if they made water dragon omni vamp then it would be a pretty solid dragon but the healing that it gives it's just so minute unless you have three dragons it's like if you have three dragons it's strong but if you have three dragons it's still the, the weakest part of the strong strength that it gives you as well now the other thing that i really need to be doing that i'm not doing yet at the moment is um placing wards so when you're really far behind and you're trying to get back into the game, as a support, you know, it's really, you're, you're the one with the biggest responsibility about placing some deep wards. And so right here, there we go. I got a good ward out right there. But you know, I'm definitely taking it. I love how the team actually decided to kind of like be aggressive here and push uh, because we really need to get some damage out and everything. But Ezreal is starting to do some pretty decent damage, which is great. Well, what I would have liked to have seen is during that time where we were pushing that mid lane with the rift, if somebody would have been pushing an opposite lane. I think a big mistake that a lot of players make when they have a strong um, presence on one side of the map that the team has to pay attention to, example, like a rift herald or something like that. And as long as your team is in a good enough position and a safe enough position, um, right here I hit an amazing bubble. And then I also follow it up with another tornado. And I'm just able to basically just completely win that fight for my team and everything. So like, this is kind of like what I'm talking about. Like, I'm waiting for, for pl impactful plays that I can make. So as soon as the um, Vi goes in, I'm able to hit the Karma and the Vi so I can't follow up. Then when they start to retreat, I'm able to hit a tornado and basically hit the entire team. Or I mean, uh, not a, a tidal wave. I'm basically able to hit the entire team with the tidal wave. And that just gives us huge advantage right there. Um, the other thing I actually want to point out right here real fast. Notice my third item. I can never, I don't remember what that item's called. But I specifically went that item. I don't think it's always the correct item. But the reason why I, I went that item is it lowers the cooldown of enemies, of your teammates' abilities when they, um, when you put a heal or something on them or cast an ability on them. So my team is very ability-based damage. So we're all, it's a basically a team of casters. Like Ezreal does most of his damage through casting of his abilities, which then also proc his auto attacks. Uh, Yasuo does do um, auto attack damage, but he gets a lot of his stuff from his abilities. Same thing with um, Echo, same thing with um, Akali. So having this item right here, it's also like having a good buff to my team. And then my abilities that I put on, it puts burns on them. So it's all just, it's all a synchronization as well. So kind of wanted to explain my item build there for this particular game. Not saying that this is the best item build for every single game, but uh, for this particular game, especially because we were behind, getting any way that I can give my team extra strength and extra advantage 
is really what my thought process, and you can see the karma is actually even doing the exact same thing. Um, and then you can also see I got the bell, the golden bell that increases your healing. I kind of noticed for some of these fights that like we were losing them just because like I couldn't heal people enough. So I got that. So with that, as you can see, we now finally have a gold lead. And I got another good deep ward in, which was great. Uh, I think, so you see where those two wards are on the map right now on their side, their jungle and, and they're, they're blue and they're red. To me, like if you're going to place a deep ward, those two spots are some of the best spots to have them placed. If you're going to place a deep ward, because it covers so many angles of the, um, of their jungle. So here, once again, we got Yasuo going in pretty deep. I like that we are getting, um, the Akali is, uh, getting some lane pressure and immediately how she rotates. So notice how she was top. She's getting the lane pressure and now she's rotating back to the team. Here I'm able to get a pretty good alt out as well. Unfortunately, I said this Yasuo starts a fight before our Akali gets there. Like the Akali did the right thing. The Akali uh, pushed the top tower and then started to rotate back. But like, let me like back this up a little bit just so I can kind of like show you. So here you got Akali, she's pushing the top lane. That's totally fine. Right here, we should just be backing up. Um, and But our Ezreal stays too far forward. He gets caught and then they're able to just fully engage on us. So like right here, we shouldn't have backed up into the, the jungle. I hate it when you back up into the jungle, back up into the lane, because the jungle doesn't really give you safety or anything like that. So because of that, the big lead that we just got, we basically just threw the lead away and we made it an even game again. And an even game is still a losing game technically uh, because they have two dragons as well, okay? And we have like, a bunch of champions really far behind. Yasuo is two and seven. Um, the Ezreal is three and four. And our Echo is uh, zero and three. So it's just like our team isn't really doing too well. And now we lose Baron Nasher of that. Like see how much all that like happens just because like the Akali did the right thing. And so like the Akali's probably really, the, these players are probably really frustrated. They're kind of like, why are you top lane? But they don't understand. It's not understand the micro and macro aspects of the game. If you fall into this situation, this is what you need to do. Like, this this is such a perfect situation. I'm just going to rewind this. We'll fast forward again, but, like, where is it? This situation right here is the most common situation that players throw games. One player is doing the right thing. He's pushing out the top wave to get lane priority so that... Because the thing is, you need this lane priority, okay? The reason why you need this lane priority right now, your team is behind. Yes, right now, like, we did catch up in gold, but we're still behind because they have two dragons, okay? It's understanding the game dynamics, understanding scaling, okay? I think the thing that most players struggle so bad with this game, man, they have such a poor understanding of scaling. They have such a poor understanding of power spikes. They have such a poor understanding of macro and micro movements of the game. The Akali makes the exact right play. We need to put pressure on the top side of the map so that way it forces one of their players to have to stop the push. Then after they send someone to stop the push, now we're looking to create a fight. Or because the Akali is actually strong, the Akali can wait in their jungle somewhere for that player to come and hopefully rotate and kill them, then giving us an advantage to where we can uh, impact the map. What our responsibility is in this situation is to realize that that's what the Akali is doing and she's making the right decision and to play back, but also entice the enemy to stay in, okay? And what we should be doing, if we're going to back up, we shouldn't be backing up towards our red jungle. We should be backing up towards the mid lane, towards our tower, or back towards where the Akali is. So like into our blue jungle, if anything, because that gives our Akali a better chance. But this right here is how kids lose games, throw games more than any situation. I, th I, I feel like I see kids throw this situation so often. And then we have this horrible fight. We all die. The Akali is just like, what the F? Um, like this is stupid. She does do the right thing here. So in this situation, like there's no way she can stop me from bearing. She's pushing the lane right away, which is what she should do. What the, I don't think she should have done is she shouldn't have rotated towards the Baron like she did here. She should have just went straight to top and pushed out the lane. Anytime you know for a fact you're going to lose Baron, there's nothing you can do. 
push lanes as fast as you can because you're basically stopping them from getting those super minions and the minions are twice as hard to kill. Okay. Um, so there she was trying to stop to see if maybe she got lucky and caught somebody backing. But I would have liked to have seen her push the mid, immediately push top, try to push to the pot wave. Uh, but not terrible, like I said. And as you see, she immediately rotated bot lane and started pushing out the bot lane. So like I said, to me, the Akali is... Me and the Akali are really the smartest players on this team and playing the game as correctly as possible. Here, once again, I'm heading over to uh, the dragon because like, I know we got to get this dragon. This this is a very vital dragon for us to have. If they get three dragons, like we're just in a hell of a lot of trouble. So, uh, And as you can see, the Ezreal is starting to do damage. So right here, you know, I, this is a great thing that I see a lot of players you need to do if you're not doing this attack the dragon if they're starting to push up on you and just lightly attack it so that way it comes out so that way the drag dragon attacks them as you attack them okay the vi goes in really deep right here i'm able to land a three-man bubble then i'm able to land a, land a three-man alt and the yasuo is able to land a three-man alt on top of that and that basically wins the team fight for us and everything and all of it was just basically just because like the vi was too aggressive too quickly if i didn't have to be so aggressive so quickly you definitely shouldn't have altered us inside of our own jungle um and then the enemy team did try to um respond but they all landed in my bubble and i got a three-man bubble and then after the bubble dropped i threw my alt and then landed a three-man alt and then yasuo ulted on top of that so they were basically immobilized for like five seconds just taking damage from everybody and um it gave us a good lead and it stopped them from getting a third dragon as well we don't have a huge lead but now we are like an advantage we're still at a spot in the game where like we could lose this game still just because they are strong but like i said scaling wise we do win that that is the nice part uh, i think Car karma i would say and so outscales me in like utility to a degree um our jungler outscales their jungler which is great our mid outscales their mid uh their adc outscales in damage but like utility plus damage ezreal is better than kaiza i would say because he has so much mobility uh, but just pure one-on-one -on -one damage kaiza is definitely more uh, and then our mid obviously outscales their mid but our mid is bad so He's kind of even, but he's starting to hit um, late game Yasuo, so it's starting to not really matter that he's bad. His champion's just going to do damage just because his champion scales so hard. So now, like, we're at a point of the game where we can lose if we're not super careful, but we're starting to str get strong enough to we're able to overtake him. Like I said, Yasuo's only got three items. He's super far behind. But three items is a good, is a good amount of damage for Yasuo as well. And I said, you can definitely understand that he doesn't, like, just how aggressive he's being, like, there. Like, if the team was ready, especially since we didn't know what they were, Vi could have altered on top of him, jumped on him. What if they were waiting in the bush? Um, who knows? But, like I said, it, it was this game, as you can see, like, I really, like, carried our team in team fights. I carried the early game in rotations, and I carried my lane. Um, and then I just kind of grouped up with this Akali, and I was able to land good alts with the Yasuo, um, and good wombo combos, basically. And, you know, our, I will say this, our Ezreal did poke really well this game. Like, he was really bad to start, but he, he did poke really, really well. Here, land another bubble, land another, uh, big alt on the entire team, basically. I think I hit everyone but one person. And now we basically just have the whole game locked up. Uh, and that's like I said. This is how, like, start of the game, teams feeding, kind of like what you saw. Like, the whole team was doing bad. Uh, the Akali is the only one who actually... Me and the Akali are really the only ones the entire game who actually played well. The rest of the team played really poorly uh, up until, like, we started to get stronger. Um, but we come back and we win the game. Uh, really good, really solid gameplay is what I thought. And I kind of liked it. Uh, simply just because it was a it was a back and forth game. It wasn't a decided game by any means. There were mistakes on both sides of the game. Like you can see here at the end, Kali definitely did good, nine and three. Um, our Echo 
is okay. I don't really like that Echo build, honestly. That's kind of a troll build. The Yasuo build's pretty troll, too, I'm not going to lie. Starting BF Sword. I mean, not BF Sword. Um, Bloodthirster. That's kind of troll also. I do like... I do like the um, the Ezreal's build, though. I love that build. I think it's a great build. And then uh, I feel like my build was pretty fine as well. So I, I will say um, it also here, if you kind of look, like I said this was a, this was a fun game because it was really back and forth. Uh, Damage-wise, good. The Ezreal, like I said, the Ezreal did poke really well. I think he just made a lot of really poor decisions early. Early in the game, he just played really bad. But he started poking really well, which was huge. Like, um, kind of like I said, he poked really well, and you could see his damage. The game was really back and forth um, until we got that big spike where we got a bunch of towers right up in a row, and then we basically lost our whole gold lead after they got Baron. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got a when we got a bunch of towers, we uh, got a big power spike. Then they got another dragon. We lost a lot of our gold lead, um, and then we started to get another huge gold lead again. But then we overstayed, or the Ezreal overstayed, and then they got Baron, and we lost the whole gold lead again. And then they, um, then we grouped well as a team and fought well as a team, and then we, we retook everything again and won the game. All because the, uh, the Vi, basically, at the last dragon, um, jumped in too soon. But anyways, guys, that's the uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.